Hello grade 11 biology class. Welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson two of the excretion unit as you can see. This one is titled the urinary system. Essentially what we're going to talk about is the several different parts of the excretion or urinary system. Um, the four parts, the main parts, are actually above me in the key points. There's not a whole ton of different organs involved in this unit, uh, but the kidney is extremely complex. Uh, lesson three will be all about the kidney. This will be first how the whole system works together. So this is the anatomy of the urinary system and yes, it is from Shutterstock. So uh, we have the inferior vena cava. So blood is going up this way towards the heart. And with this one right here, this is the descending aorta. The blood goes down towards, well here are the kidneys and to the legs. So the aorta goes up from the heart and curls back down and goes down your body. So blood is delivered to the kidneys from directly from the aorta. We have the aorta into the renal artery. So that artery goes straight off the aorta and to the kidneys and the kidneys get a lot of blood. That's why they're connected directly to the aorta. They need a lot of blood. So uh, the renal artery is connected to the kidney here. The whole, this is the kidney. There are several different parts and we're gonna get into all those. Um, and then the blood that is filtered goes into the renal uh, vein, the blue one here, and that attaches to the inferior vena cava and it pushes it back up towards the heart. So blood that goes to the kidneys has an extremely short trip. It goes to the kidneys and it goes back to the heart uh, and that is it. Um, like some blood that would go down to your leg has an extremely long trip or even to your liver is a longer trip. But here it goes to the kidney, it is filtered and it goes back. We have this area here, which is the renal pelvis. So that's kind of the area where the, all the stuff meets. And then the urine goes down here, this tract, this is the ureter, that's key point two, down here to the bladder where it is stored and it exits through the urethra. So you can see most of the stuff that's going on is, is in the kidney. Um, we can also mention the adrenal gland right here. We're gonna talk about that later as well. So just note that the adrenal gland is attached to the kidney. And we're gonna talk about the renal column and the renal uh, pyramids and the renal cortex. Uh, we're gonna talk about all that. Here is a picture of uh, an actual urinary system. So uh, this forcep is drawing this area back here uh, so that you can see the adrenal gland. Uh, on this side, there is a flap that's covering it. So you can't see the adrenal gland. So that's why they have this pulled back here. And then the kidneys are a pretty distinct shape. And you can see here the large amount of stuff you have going into the middle of it. That's the renal artery and the renal vein uh, going into it. Uh, we have here, this big thick one uh, is labeled as the inferior vena cava, so that's traveling back up towards the heart. And then we have this stretchy one here, that is the aorta. Okay, so we have the, uh, the aorta brings blood down, it goes to the kidneys, it then enters the inferior vena cava and goes back up. Now the stuff that is filtered, the urine, goes down the ureters. And it's these two strings right here, there, and then this one right here, two strings. And they look out of place. They look like they're just hanging there. There's nothing really attaching them. And that's true. They are just kind of there. Uh, they lead down to this muscular part here, which is the bladder. So the bladder has been cut, but you can see how thick it is. And the reason that it's so thick is so that it can stretch. And as it stretches, it becomes thinner. Uh, so it's able to accommodate a lot of liquid. Uh, so I hope that gave you a good idea of what you're looking at. Again, we've got the adrenal gland on top of the kidney with the renal artery and renal vein here. The urine travels down this strand called the ureter to the bladder where it is then stored. So the urinary system is also known as the renal system or the urinary tract. It contains the kidneys, ureter, bladder, and urethra right above me, the key points with the kidney being the most complex organ in the system and one of the most complex organs in your body for sure. Uh, the purpose of the urinary system is to eliminate waste from the body um, and the waste that we primarily need to eliminate is uh, urea and it regulates blood volume, it controls the levels of certain chemicals 
controls the levels of ions like uh, potassium and sodium so that you don't have too much or too little of each. Uh, it does a lot for you in terms of balancing your whole system and making sure that everything is running properly. So let's talk about the renal artery and renal vein first. I've talked about them a lot already, but the renal artery brings blood to the kidney to be filtered. That's the red one here brings blood in to the kidney and as you can see it flows all the way to this part the outside it branches off and flows all the way into the cortex and the renal vein collects the filtered blood that is in the back here and it goes to the inferior vena cava so that it can be distributed again we have the medulla and the cortex so blood flows through the renal artery into the cortex so it flows into the outer part of it here uh, it branches off and goes to all different parts of it. So the cortex is kind of where the filtering of the blood starts. Uh, the renal cortex contains the start of the filtration process. And I'll get into so much more detail, you will not like it, in lesson three. Don't worry about that. Blood then flows down from here into the medulla or the renal pyramids. And this is where the majority of the filtration occurs. And where I say that is... Um, the filtered part and the blood run very, very close to one another so that they can transfer stuff back and forth. So the majority of it gets filtered at the beginning, uh, but then you get a lot of filtration, or the major stuff, I should say, like the larger molecules get filtered at the beginning, but you get a lot of transfer back and forth. Like, oh, I need more sodium, so I'm going to keep that, and I'm going to get rid of potassium, or the other way around, or... I've got way too much um, blood volume, so I'm going to push more water into the uh, urine so that your, your urine becomes more dilute and your uh, blood volume is lowered. So it's a whole lot of balancing that goes on in this section, in the renal um, medulla, in the pyramids. Uh, the filtered blood then enters the renal vein so it can go back to the heart. And then here is the renal pelvis, which I believe is the next thing we're gonna talk about. Yes, the renal pelvis is this corner thing here. So the renal pelvis of the kidney is what collects all the wastes that have been filtered. You can see that they're kind of attached to the medulla here and here and here, these pyramids right here, they're all attached to the pelvis. So it kind of filters into here, which is a collecting zone. So it functions as essentially a funnel to direct urine into the ureter. So here is the ureter, as a, that's the tube that flows down. Uh, the ureter is the tube which drains urine into the bladder. So blood flows into the cortex, it then flows down into the medulla where there's extra filtration and trading of water and ions and other molecules uh, until it figures out exactly what it wants to excrete and what it wants to keep. It then sends what it wants to keep in the renal vein to the back to the heart so it can be pumped around again. And what it, what it doesn't want to keep is collected by the renal pelvis and sent to the ureter. So again, we have this picture. Uh, that's, what the, that's why you have these lumps or these pyramids inside the kidney because that's where all this uh, transfer back and forth is happening. And then we have the cortex out here where filtration starts. Um, the renal pelvis right here, and the ureter. Again, you can see from this diagram, we have um, the ureter, which leads right into the pelvis uh, of the kidney, uh, down into the bladder here. Um, this is the large intestine, this larger part um, here that's less muscular. The bladder. So the bladder is a very muscular and thick-walled organ that stores urine before it's disposed. Um, so it can store quite a lot, uh, and that's because the muscle is very thick and is able to stretch. So urine enters the bladder through the ureters, and you have one ureter from each kidney. Urine leaves the bladder through the urethra at the bottom, uh, which is one singular tube leading outside the body. I think you guys are familiar. Uh, the walls of the bladder have a series of ridges and folds called rugae. You should be familiar with rugae from the stomach. Essentially, rugae is a generic name for any folds in a muscular organ. So the bladder has rugae and the stomach has rugae. Strange. 
Just like the stomach, these allow for expansion. Uh, we have also a muscle that is called the detrusor muscle that makes up a large portion of the bladder and is, typo, able to contra uh, contract for a long time while you're void voiding your bladder or forcing pee out of your bladder. So the bladder is essentially when it's empty, very wrinkly and have very thick walls. And what happens is that as it fills up, the rugae expand, the muscles stretch until it gets to a point where this detrusor muscle detects I've got too much in it because it's been stretched out so much. So the detrusor, mu detrusor muscle is also able to stay relaxed for long periods of time while the bladder is filling. You do not want your detrusor muscle, which makes up a large portion of your bladder wall to contract when you don't want to be peeing. You want to be able to stay relaxed for a long period of time, so it is good at that. As your bladder fills, the rugae flatten and the bladder uh, walls thin, um, and obviously the bladder gets builder, bigger. And that is not the reason the fact that the bladder gets bigger is not the reason that you get an urge to pee. It is because the um, detrusor muscle is stretching farther and farther. So the urge to urinate uh, stems from stretch receptors uh, that activate when there's 300 to 400 milliliters of urine in the bladder and when the bladder wall is sufficiently thin. These stretch receptors signal the nervous system to stimulate the detrusor muscle which forces urine out of the bladder. So when it gets to the size, your detrusor, detrusor muscle will inherently want to contract. And that is when you need to pee. So uh, you have some different safeguards. You can control that just a little bit uh, to a certain extent, but then there's also a couple of gates that you can control. So then we're in the bladder. You can see again how thick it is. This is a, a expanding bladder. So the walls are very, very thin. When they're thin, um, the detrusor muscle, which is in here and all the way up here, so it can push down, um, contracts. So the urethra is the tube that connects the bladder to the outside of the body where urine is expelled. Um, there are two sphincters, one at each end of the urethra, to stop the urine from leaving the body when it's not convenient. So when it's full, your muscle will contract, the detrusor muscle will contract to get rid of it, and you control it with um, the internal urethral sphincter and the external urethral sphincter. Now, um, this one, the first one, is involuntary control. You have a, you can control it a little bit, but uh, it is generally involuntary. You can't think about it very much and let it and let it work. But the external urethral sphincter is the one that you can control uh, most often. So. Uh, if you're being told to hold it and it's an emergency, that would be the one uh, that you are controlling, the external urethral sphincter. The internal urethral sphincter is located between the bladder and the urethra. It's right at the base of the bladder, essentially. It is a continuation of the detrusor muscle with involuntary control. It is the primary muscle for stopping urine from flowing out of your body. Um, when you're not thinking about peeing or stopping pee, that is the muscle that is stopping it. It's interesting that, it, that the detrusor muscle is also the muscle that voids your bladder. The external sphincter muscle uh, is located closer to the end of the urethra and it, it is under voluntary control. We can think about it when we want to release it or when we want to stop urine um, at any time. Uh, it is the secondary muscle for stopping urine from leaving the body. So just as a recap, we have our kidneys with our renal artery and renal vein with the renal pelvis in the middle. The cortex is where filtration starts, but a lot of it happens in the pyramid or in the medulla. Urine is uh, captured in the uh, pelvis, traveled down the ureter to the bladder where it is voided through the urethra. And the detrusor muscle is a main muscle that is involved in voiding the bladder. Bladder cancer is something that is extremely common. Um, I'd like to do some research on it, answer a few questions, uh, and if you have any questions for me, please let me know. Thanks so much for watching everyone, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you soon.